Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Something stinks, Hannity and Tommy Lauren expose what's suspicious about media reporting on shooting. Sean Hannity and Tommy Lauren went to Las Vegas and commented on the suspicious way that the mainstream media has been reporting the shooting. Instead of reporting on any of the facts of what has happened, they immediately made it political. Tommy Lauren made the point that those who are hellbent on murdering thousands of people won't care about breaking the law. Guest Kaya Jones agreed. If you have evil intentions in your heart, you're gonna find a way, Jones said. Criminals, terrorists, psychos, they don't obey our laws. They don't care about your gun control. When you have a gun-free zone, you are neutering everyone there, said Lauren. Here's my question though. Why are we spending all of this time, not us, but others in the news and others in the celebrity sphere, why are they spending so much time analyzing what kind of guns he used, how many he had? Asked Lauren. I want to know more about him and more about his friend. I want to know about the victims and their families, asked Lauren. Don't you find there is something off here? Really off? Asked Hannity. Where there's smoke, there's fire, said Lauren. Usually in situations like this you know everything about the person. Every Facebook page they've ever been on, everyone they've ever known, and all of a sudden, all we're talking about is the weapons he used and the firearms? No, something stinks, said Lauren. Do you agree? Sanders crushes feminists who attack the women in Trump's administration, it's epic. Liberals claim to fight for women, but they really just fight for liberal women. This is seen time and time again as they launch vicious attacks at Sarah Sanders. They attack her for her appearance and her weight. They types of things that they would have a heart attack over if it was about them. Sanders has a message to all those women. This is a president who was elected by the forgotten men and women of this country, and a lot of liberals have contempt for those people, whether they're men, whether they're women, and they want to attack us. I think that it's a great reminder of why this president was elected, said Sanders in an interview with Fox. We're going to continue to grow the economy, continue to create jobs, two million new jobs since this president came into office. And I'm sure a lot of those are going to women. And maybe we'll get to replace some of those female journalists out there that don't like us very much at some point," said Sanders. The bottom line is, this is a president who's focused on getting things done, focused on getting things done for the men and women that frankly, a lot of the liberal elites in this country don't like, have contempt for," she said. And he's focused on empowering women, and he is doing that in the way he puts people in place in his administration. And I think it's sad that they're attacking a lot of us while claiming to champion women's causes and women's issues," she said. Do you think she's right? Liberals launch an attack against Taylor Swift for saying she had a great year. Taylor Swift just got in big trouble with liberals? Why? for feeling happiness. With Donald Trump as president, you are not allowed to feel joy. Swift started the controversy with a post of a London concert on Instagram. I love you guys so much. This was a photo at Paul underscore C. Doty took at a Capital official Jingle Bell Ball in London a few days ago. I couldn't have asked for a better year, all thanks to you. Thanks for all the birthday wishes. Can't wait to see what 28 will be like. See you on tour," wrote Swift. That was enough to offend liberals. Is there anything more annoying than Taylor Swift talking about what a great year 2017 has been while everyone else is fighting for our lives under Trump? Ugh," wrote Kevin Alred, a college professor who teaches a class called Politicizing Beyoncé. She is so out of touch with the real world that it's disturbing lol. Nobody cares what a great year she had," wrote another user. I mean, yeah there were Nazis and and white supremacy marches, 
and families are being torn apart, and there were mass shootings, and people are losing health care, but none of that affects me, so 2017 was great. Wrote another. There was even an article written by The Cut called A Straight, White, Multimillionaire Pop Star Had a Great 2017, that mocked the artist for feeling joy. Watch Joe Scarborough accuse Trump of having a mind melt with Putin. MSNBC's Joe Scarborough keeps getting lower and lower. He showed some clips of President Trump and Vladimir Putin saying vaguely similar things and then accused them of having a mind melt and being one person. Boy, I tell you what Willie, that is some message discipline. You've got to really respect those two guys just for no other reason to have the message discipline that they have. It's so jarring. And we're going to be introducing Peggy Newton in a second here," said Scarborough after playing a couple of clips. But for those of us who grew up as conservative Republicans in the height of the Cold War it really is jarring to see Donald Trump in a minute meld with a man who runs a country that invades other countries," said Scarborough. That shoots down passenger planes that assassinates journalists that assassinates political leaders, pretty jarring. But he's doing it and as David Ignatius says that facts are hiding in broad daylight, said Scarborough. Former KGB agent Putin knows exactly how to play Donald Trump. He says exactly what he knows Donald Trump will respond to, responded MSNBC's Willie Geist. Oh my God, he plays him like a fiddle, said Scarborough. And in fact got a phone call from the president yesterday, said Geist. Breaking one top Trump staffer is about to get fired. For various reasons, there has been a great deal of turnover within the staff of Republican President Donald Trump in the White House. This may not come as a surprise, since Trump is an outsider whose style does not fit easily within the established Washington, D.C., conventions. Former Health and Human Services Secretary Tom Price was the last to go and, according to reports, Trump's chief of staff General John Kelly is planning on resigning from the administration within a week. There has been ample evidence to support this, such as the fact that at the last minute General Kelly was removed from an Air Force One flight Trump made to meet with victims of the Las Vegas shooting. Reported Bloomberg's Jennifer Jacobs via Twitter, General Kelly was originally going to be on AF on to Vegas with Trump today but was pulled off flight, I'm told. She added. W.H. not answering cues about it. It is has been the custom for General Kelly to accompany President Trump on his trips, so this unexpected decision is telling. The decision came from the top, as blogger Bill Palmer explained, writing, Protocol says that Trump is the only one who could have made a decision like that, so we know that Trump booted Kelly from the flight. The White House is refusing to publicly address the incident, but others are talking. Added Washington, D.C., pundit Scott Dworkin, I've heard from three people from different circles on the Hill that this may be John Kelly's last week as Trump's chief of staff. This move does not come as a shock to some, as tensions have reportedly been rising between Trump and Kelly in recent weeks. Described the Washington Post, Trump chafes at some of the retired Marine Corps general's moves to restrict access to him since he took the job almost a month ago said several people close to the president. They run counter to Trump's love of spontaneity and brashness, prompting some Trump loyalists to derisively dub Kelly the church lady because they consider him strict and morally superior. Do you think Trump will be better off without General Kelly? breaking Las Vegas witness says there was more than one shooter. The recent massacre at the Route 91 Harvest Country Music Festival in Las Vegas has gone as the worst mass shooting in the history of the United States, leaving 58 people dead and nearly 500 others wounded. It's hard to believe that one person could have done so much damage, all by himself, in such a short span of time. 
One concertgoer named Gail Davis who was at the concert recently told conservative radio host Michael Savage why she believes there may have been more than one shooter. Said Gail, who hid with her husband under a vendor tent during the shooting, the thing that we noticed, my husband noticed too and I think he even the Metro police officer, there were shots that were higher pitched. There were shots that were lower sounding, and they were going at the same time, and the lower shots were getting closer to us, and I'm thinking, oh my god, somebody walking in the crowd is spraying their gun back and forth and shooting people. While not claiming expertise in firearms, Gail said that she has a distinct memory of what she heard, saying, the one that was lower kept getting closer sounding to us. To me, it sounded like somebody was walking from the crowd from west to east, through the crowd and shooting. She also recalled that a woman right behind her got hit by a bullet in the stomach. Said Gail, how could a bullet be coming from our right, which was on our west, we're facing direct south, the bullet would have to come straight up and make a 90 degree turn and go into her stomach. Clark County Sheriff Joe Lombardo recently lent credence to theories that Paddock was assisted, saying in a press conference about shooter Steve Paddock, he had to have some help at some point. Maybe he's a super guy, maybe he's super yahoo, was working out all this on his own, but it would be hard for me to believe that. Do you think there was another shooter? It's not fake. Chris Cuomo has on-air meltdown after being called out for being fake news. CNN's Chris Cuomo has a huge problem with being called fake news, even if it's true. He once compared a journalist being called fake news to a black person being called the N-word. I see being called fake news as the equivalent of the N-word for journalists. It's the equivalent of calling an Italian any of the ugly words that people have for that ethnicity. That's what fake news is to a journalist. It is an ugly insult, and you had better be right if you're going to charge a journalist with lying on purpose," said Cuomo. He apparently still hasn't gotten over his hang-up. Mick Mulvaney, Office of Management and Budget Director, accused Cuomo of only reporting on the bad stuff when it comes to Trump and Puerto Rico. He accused CNN of ignoring all of the good that Trump has done. That's not what you do in a situation like this screamed Cuomo. You report the reality. That's not being done to you, to the president, Mick, to embarrass you. Whatever's being done is not enough and if you don't know that now you're never gonna know it, said Cuomo. Well the good news is you're clearly going to do a better job going forward and we appreciate that, said Mulvaney sarcastically. When you say some of this reporting is fake. It's disingenuous and it's not true. Don't call it fake because it's not fake. Everybody gets that it's going to take time. But you know what else people get? You could have had more people there, Cuomo screamed. 